Hi, I'm Loring Warble. In February and March 2013, I began a new series of poems called Tweets Gone Bad, whose purpose did not seem clear at the time the poems were being written, except to suggest that the clustering of hashtags for tweets might create drain clogs around wormholes. In exploring this idea, I learned on March 14, 2013, that Facebook was going to start applying hashtags to many of its posts. Pope Francis I, our newly convened Pope, suggested that the end times may truly be nigh. Before I introduce the first Tweets Gone Bad poem, I want to give a little demonstration. This is a good tweet. Good geographical coordinates, powerful ley lines. This is a bad tweet. The start of the dark side. This is Tweets Gone Bad. Tweets Gone Bad 1. Prolegomena for any future metaphysic, metapsychic, or metastichic. In developing the poem's resurgent hashtag House of York and the Dorner Party, I unwittingly stumbled upon a new method for temporarily confining ley lines for close examination. The exacting definition and sleek shape of the 140 character tweet makes it the perfect anchor for tying down lines of flux in the ringing harmonics of a crumbling planet. Here we are speaking not of admiralty or CQR styles of anchor used in sheltered harbors, nor the drogues favored by Mediterranean scows, but the pushpin anchor an entomologist might use for bug display under glass. In the case of the ley line, the butterfly is alive during the process of pinning, and the hashtag of the tweet serves as the brightly colored head of the pushpin. Is the ley line real? The question is as irrelevant as asking whether a particular divine being, favored by one faith or another, is real for any other. The mere act of playing as if, by certain rules, makes the ley line spring to life orthogonally positioned against both electromagnetic lines of force and broadband undersea fiber cables. The pinning enhances the anchor points, causing the ley lines to throb like the erbium-doped fiber amplifier repeater that is responsible for making the flag cable glow at a frequency no one can see. Geographical points chosen through Google map searches are straightforward, but care must be taken when choosing a specific time, particularly if a pinning process through more than four dimensions causes the accidental snagging of additional eras, like the driftwood entangled in the maw of a big mouth bass. The ley line can loop, reconnect, and form the type of sizzling inflammation called a coronal storm or a sunspot within a gaseous body. In a haggard rock like our own Gaia, the looping ley line can snare the unsuspecting observer in a new and unprecedented spooky action at a distance. Be forewarned, then. Pinning the ley line can lead to the obvious thrash that spits out tiny black holes, imprisoning the random nose or index finger in an event horizon of centuries within a blink, seven years in one night. More subtly, the mere act of observing the ley lines can violate any number of uncertainty principles, piling up the Schrodinger's cats in mountains of dead or alive, unnerving the neighbors in weeks with no garbage pickup. Attempting such pin management during tweet storms will lead to an infinite regression of marching, water-bearing broomsticks long out of the sorcerer's control. Some incantations were never meant to be tweeted. Tweets Gone Bad 2 In all subsequent Tweets Gone Bad, I will use the POW to indicate a hashtag. This is meant to destroy all evil tweet birds. Tweets Gone Bad 2. Resurgent hashtag House of York. Beginning with an epigram from Jonathan Goldstein. He's not really the murderous sort, unlike the Lord who gets downright smitey at times. Pow! My kingdom for a horse. Pow! Not complaining. 
Pow, anyone but San Francisco. Pow, House of York. Pow, Jenny Lewis, Ray Lewis. Pow, just saying. Pow, Plantagenet. Pow, Ravens, nevermore. Pow, never forever. Pow, never ending war of roses. Four months before Twin Towers became the two princes on our own shore, give the Yanks a Bosworth of their own. I am dowsing aimless hammocks encircling Harrogate, Leeds, Leicester, Filingdales, random Yorkshire moors, telling no one of the whispers that Lancastrian radomes sneer at dawn. Lindis tightens the lavender and pink scarf, pocked with runes from Armley Mills against a wet May catabatic breeze. She tells me that Otley was a Celtic readout, then form fit for Hadrian, now designed for the legion of new men with Yanks. But I am not here to apologize for Hunter's stones. I am here to depose a king. Sixteen months earlier, a millennium begun by some sloppy counting methods, I was flying to Stansted, sleeping in Canary Wharf, dreaming of Docklands in a Dog Island previous life, sampling wasabi mash, and averting the overweening attractive force of a special breed of supermagnet, the type left abandoned under Texas fields in the epochs all dreams of Higgs abandoned the Yanks, and declared the next thousand years a reign under the house of Cern and Berners Lee. This same attractive force was observed in a botched organ transplant, crouching in the chapel staircase in the Tower of London, hissing, Drop the yuppie trinkets, hold the adolescent skulls, the two in the tower become two towers, but first you will be visited by Harrogate and Otley. First you will dream of Shah Massoud in Atlanta. Look upon your works, Plantagenet, and despair. The hissing only stopped when my random walk took me to South Quay, an IRA signature designed to hold skulls at bay. And now the third skull, made manifest in Leicester Car Park, reveals for we game fans the common chord of a Ninth Ward outage in the new floods of Florence and a Mercedes-Benz Superdome eight years later. Richard III, bony and real and stripped of all pretense, is Sam Coke deep in an end zone, while the safety dance sidestep is the necessary play for hacked power grids, for wars of roses that never even reach the penultimate flower storm. My skullcap headache would scarcely imply that I am that next Richard III, itching to leave the 24-7 car park as the last of the fans exit the stadium gates, nor does it equate the crimes of each year's Ray Lewis with the last Yorkshire king. It is merely dress rehearsal for future princes of Denmark. Tweets gone bad. 3. The Dorner Party. Beginning with an epigram from Lisa Sabater, blog diva. Blah, 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 Israel, blah, 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 peace, blah, 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 Middle East, blah, 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 courage, blah, 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 pow, State of the Union. Why is this night different from all other nights? Because it is John Wilkes Booth in a barn gone Hwasong Camp 16, colloquially known as Nuclear Test Road, often mistaken for Big Bear Mountain Resort. Because there is no union to state or restate. Because cannibalization, like charity, begins at home. The home AR-15. The home hellfire. The home enhanced termination technique. The home lightweight fission implosion. Because all Sierra passes between Clubview Drive and Delamar Mountain are closed, save to those mumbling, we eat critters as the inferno manifestations that were Booth in Bowling Green, Dorner in a Berghoff cul-de-sac, remind us just how many representatives of the species this warning entails. Tweets gone bad for the wrong sky. Pow, Chelyabansk. Pow, choosing which shards hurt. Pow, Tunguska again. Pow, always crashing in the same car. Field glasses. 
Geodes. Neowise infrared. Make no difference for soothsayers scanning mistaken vector. Dream of the Great Barrier Reef. A Guadalcanal slicing DA-14 asteroid. Is disturbed at dawn by the first recorded screams from Yekaterinburg. It's always the ones behind you, gripping switchblades on Peachtree Avenue, that frighten more than the surveillance target you were watching for hours. The same goes for the prophets you choose to monitor, I suppose. Every televangelist standing knee-deep in waders in the French Quarter can be mocked with ease by the first Colbert or Stewart to arrive on scene. But let Metropolitan's Latouste Feofan whisper for five minutes, and you know that this was your Tunguska, too. That is your car alarm that will not let you return to much-needed sleep. There will be an Android video clip available shortly for any chosen city where the trumpets of Gabriel play background riffs for sonic smashes. Except, of course, for the corner where the unexpected blade now turns in your pancreas. No eye reporter video and no YouTube in which to post the results. Only a Feofan moment of fragile. Despite the pain, you half turn to meet the flash and hear the metallic rasp of a stratosphere unzipping. Tweet's gone bad. Five. Let me show you how it's done. Pow! Worst birthday ever. Pow! Odds be ever in your favor. Pow! The Grammys are for music. Pow! Antelope trails. Pow! Collapsible Justin wings. She simultaneously describes three scenarios where extrication seems impossible. One, convincing the ex-husband to attend a Justin Bieber concert for the benefit of the child. Two, crossbow hunting for antelope on private property, wounding the owner's sheep by mistake. Three, curb tending through sold out showings of Silver Linings Playbook, eating bootleg popcorn, wondering if a round of bowling is inevitable. I am transfixed this mucilage afternoon, diffuse light becoming Westchester County Airport circa 1997, one train away from the Lower East Side and Harry Pussy's last stand. I opted for a White Plains Cabernet on that fateful evening, a similar vintage to the one across the table today, as I learned the many benefits of joining the Justin Bieber fan club. A mere $100 earns you the right to buy $250 tickets, excluding, of course, handling charges, valet parking, the after party, and the tangential but obligatory costs of making your own t-shirt. She describes bouts of glue guns and faux rhinestones, Little one curled up in a 102-degree fevered fetal ball, estranged beloved becoming educated in the ways of tomorrow night's opener, Carly Rae Jepsen. I told Alex to familiarize himself with all her lyrics, since she is so accurate in describing his particular varieties of bastard. I toss off a remark about Taylor for her time, but am still anchored in 1997. Wondering if I longed for that city train and its Doppler call, or resigned myself happily to tales of the Upper Hudson. Your eyelids flutter as you long for Flannery O'Connor and the violent bearing it away, away. The ex also was invited along for a crossbow practice in a blind expressly built for pronghorn pursuit, even as he warned her that bagging envelope, antelope wasn't his thing. Let me show you how it's done. The arrow caroms off the edge of the blind, wedging itself in the lower leg of a sheep hundreds of yards from the leaping antelope. It really tests your etiquette, explaining yourself and making amends to the owner. There is one part of me finding joy in all least favored scenarios. There is one part of me limping away from the scene of the crime. The little one, bedecked in I Love J.B. Sparkles, 
is ready to ride Nana's shoulders for hours. Nana is fashion designer and pronghorn of the Eastern Plains. But then the Pepsi Center pyrotechnics are louder than any metal band, she exclaims, as I see 230 lifeless bodies outside Kiss nightclub in Santa Maria, a carnival no Brazilian foresaw. Justin is suspended from the ceiling, wearing angel wings, and she is terrified. There is one part of me imagining a seven-year-old facing her first fear of angels. There is one part of me noting a conversation about Justin's 19th birthday in the Cirque du Soir, devolving into a conversation on how CIA agents justify the appropriate excuses for waterboarding. The pronghorn in captivity never gained credence before antelope herds vanished west of Kiowa. We made do with dromedaries and emus in the snowy foothill cul-de-sacs. I have kept Mr. Bieber and Mr. Carney in after-school detention, explaining that the worst sort of chamber intended for punishment can be made a crucible of joy. Let me show you how it's done. I have shouldered my crossbow in the manner of Katniss, but I look up to see an unfortunate line of limping sheep dominating the horizon. The proprietor will have to be notified.